Okay, good morning everybody. And let me yeah, let me welcome the media to this very brief and uh, impromptu press conference. You all will be aware that the staff at the college, we are in a situation now, one that has been going on for a very, very long time. And for years, I must say representing the staff at the Dominica State College has been a nightmare. It's one of the worst that we have experienced. And I can say that for a fact. Over the years, we have seen serious violation of the labor laws of this country. We have seen an institution being run and managed by one man. I repeat, one man. As I speak to you now, there is not a board of governors in place, one which is required by the State College Act. So you do not have a bursar, you do not have a, um, a human resource manager, you do not have a registrar, you do not have a vice president. One man advanced in age is doing everything here and alone all by himself. This thing has been going on for too long and it needed to stop and to be stopped right now. I am very pleased, I am very pleased that the staff, they are all together and they have realized that without their support, there is nothing the union can do. So I want to compliment them. I want to congratulate them for the stand that they have taken. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, the labor, the labor Acts of Dominica speaks to the whole question of employment and the, those acts apply to statutory institutions. So in terms of permanent employment, in terms of probation, the Protection of Labor Act, of Employment Act, sorry, stipulate those things. But what we have seen happening in recent times over the years is that no regard is paid or paid, sorry, to the Protection of Employment Act. And the president on his own, even after people have been working for a number of years, for decades, now he is talking that is introducing a three to five year, year period before you get permanent employment. That is unheard of. <laughs> because we know that in the Protection of Employment yeah. Act, it states that you are on probation for six months. And that probation period can be extended. The only way you can be terminated during your probation period is for poor performance. Mm. I repeat, for poor performance. Thank you. So Thank at the you. end of your six months, if you have not received a letter appointing you, you are automatically appointed. That's the law. And that was not written by me. That is the Protection of Employment Act. We have seen certain things in the collective agreement, and he pays no regard whatsoever to the collective agreement. That is the president. He has no board to supervise what he's doing. We wrote in, in um, January of 2020, informing the permanent secretary of our nominee to the board because the act provides for the union to have a representative on the board. As I speak to you now, and even subsequent to another letter that was written a year later, we have not received an acknowledgement of our letter. We have no idea whether a board has been appointed or not. Last week, Friday it was, yes, we had a meeting, and one would have expected that if you are meeting with the president, that is after I requested that meeting, if you are meeting with the president and the PS accompanies him to the meeting, that at that meeting, you would have left the meeting with some information from the permanent secretary. Yeah. When I called on the permanent secretary, she said she's just there to take notes because she was instructed, just imagine, the permanent secretary was at the meeting to take notes because she was instructed to come to the meeting and therefore wow. she could not make any contribution. Wow. Just imagine that. Not a real right? secretary. 
Yes. The President is fully aware that for the financial year 2015-2018, that the staff here should be paid, they should be paid a double bubble, and they should be paid a 3% salary increase. I used to be on that board, I negotiated, and one of the things we agreed is that when you negotiate salary increases, whatever applies to government employer, employees, the same applies to the college staff. Some years ago, I was at a meeting, and when the president was making it difficult to pay staff, the board told him that since precedence has been established, and that was the practice, he had to pay the staff. As a result, he paid 50% of the double bubble to staff, and up to now, they have not been paid that other 50%. There is no indication, no meeting being held with them, <coughs> as to when that amount will be paid in addition to the 3% salary increase that was agreed to. So that is the situation. Absolutely no respect to the staff here. No respect whatsoever. We believe if the gentleman has served and he has no ideas, as I explained to him, that at his age, he has too many responsibilities and therefore he can perform. That's what I told him at the meeting and I stick to that. So that is the situation. People are working here and the physical condition are just in a deplorable state. The classrooms do not have the furniture that they should have, no electricity, so, no electricity and so on. Just imagine, and that would have aggravated anybody. When we spoke to the president last week, you know who the president, what the president told us? That the revenue or the subsistence from government has reduced from 9 million to 4.5 million. And listen to that, you know. Listen, listen carefully. Very well. And the staff remained silent and they never told government that about they were opposed to the tuition. Is that, is, is that a responsibility for staff? Is that a responsibility of the, of the union? I mean, if government has introduced free tuition at the state college, I don't see any Dominican opposing that, including the union. What management had to do? was to indicate to the government, now that you have introduced free tertiary education, therefore, our revenue has been reduced, and we are asking for you to make up for that in the... In the, in the, in the, in the that is how... That is how... That is how a sensible and intelligent, and I stress intelligent, management behave. That's how they behave. But you cannot blame, you cannot blame the staff. And I, I, want, I wonder when the Prime Minister hears, hears of that, what he will think of him. Because you are saying that the staff had to indicate to the government that the, that the tuition, free tuition, is affecting the college and so on. That is not staff business, right? So the question here, my friend, is not just about the salaries that are not being paid. I believe the college staff, more than any other group of employees in Dominica has exercised a lot, a lot of patience. Yes. Yes. And they are very dedicated. They are very dedicated. People have listened to the voices of bus drivers. They have listened to the voices of many other people. The people who educate our children, people have to listen to them. People have to listen to them. And we are, we are following that press conference. The president issued a press statement. And I was very disappointed. Because he selected only two areas that he highlighted in his press statement. Re misinformation of what really transpired. All right? So he spoke, he spoke about the money that has been owed to staff and blaming COVID and every, everything. Why should COVID be blamed when staff are not getting what is due to them and other people all over who are getting COVID is not being paid? So we can overlook COVID and pay bus drivers, pay so many other people. But when it comes to the staff at the college, those who help to make us who we are today, 
that no regard, no respect is being paid to them. Right? We are seeing a lot of things happening here. No meetings with staff. And staff are not being told as to what is happening. I repeat, it is a one man show at the Dominican State College. And that situation has to change. Because the college, to me, in terms of management, it is worse off now than it was a few years ago. The objectives of the college, as far as management has to do, is not being met because we have weak management and everything is like a dictatorship system here. We have things that just thrown at people and they have no choice. We have seen senior people losing their jobs, no replacement, no replacement. We have seen situations where if they want to get rid of somebody, they dump, they dump them somewhere else, right? Those things have to change, and I'm saying that the college staff need to be working in the conditions that are conducive to learning, and what we are doing today, my friend, it is not only for the staff, but also for the students. Whether you are, whether you are a nurse, whether you are a fire officer, whether you're a police officer, you have to understand that the conditions here are not conducive to learning for your children. And you cannot blame the staff. In any other country, staff would, would have worked out long, long, long ago. The question is, how long can we take it? And to tell people that their services have been withdrawn, that is ridiculous, and the man better come good. Because we are not going to joke with him. I repeat, if he wants to threaten anybody here in terms of their job, we are not going to joke about it. You harass one. You harass one. You touch one. You touch everybody. And I know I know I'm being taped. I know I'm being taped. I have no problem with that. I know I'm being taped, I have no problem with that. And if the problem cannot be resolved here, we will seek solidarity from the rest of our membership. Thank you very much. We're <laughs>